Hey guys, so I hope you are ready for a first impressions. I have been dying to play with this baby I bought Hindash's Beautopsy palette. It came in well over a week ago and I have been dying to play with this. I was deciding in what format I wanted to play with this and I really just wanted to give it its own video. So we're gonna do a first impression. I haven't played with this before. I haven't even swatched any of these shadows yet. I just kind of want to put it on my face. Now, if you don't know Hindash, I personally follow him on Instagram. That's where I catch up with him. I love his work. He is a makeup artist. He originally started off as a painter. So he looks at makeup through a painter's kind of lens, which makes sense with the type of palette that he created and his work is so clean. I highly recommend you follow him on Instagram and YouTube as well so you can learn his tricks. He's just such a very precise and clean makeup artist and the looks he does are absolutely beautiful. I've been following him for such a long time now so I had to pick up his palette. By the way, if you guys are new here, hi, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market. And of course, one of my favorite makeup artists, I had to pick up his palette. Now, shipping did take a couple of weeks. I bought it on the day that it first launched, but it came through DHL. And I mean, I got the palette all in one piece, so I have nothing to complain about. It is pricey. I paid about $70 for everything, but hopefully it's made up for in the functionality of this palette. So the packaging is just a cardboard, but it's a very sturdy cardboard. It's not cheap, you know, like this is robust. I believe he said he made it cardboard so that it could withstand um, just roughness and is very sturdy for the shadows, but it really is such a plain design here, which I don't mind. Now it says the contents are made in Italy, but this was assembled in China. It has a 24 month shelf life and it is 100% vegan. Here's what the box came in and then it also has a card which tells you how to use it and a little bit of descriptions of the shades. Now when you open it up, I like how long it is. You have a mirror and then you have the six pans but as you can see there are multiple shades in the pans. So this is supposed to be a palette that can be used for both face and eyes and I was a little bit worried about this concept at first I definitely think it can be intimidating to the regular consumer you guys know I, I really I have a makeup artist certification I do bridal makeup but I don't really consider myself to be a professional makeup artist even though I technically am for me I do feel comfortable with a palette like this but even then I'm I guess I like being told what to do and it's dumb but I like being told this is a bronzer this is a blush this is eyeshadow. So Hindash really breaks the rules with this palette. You can kind of use it however you would want. There's all different types of shades for different skin tones as well. Obviously, what I use for myself today is going to be different than what somebody else uses for their complexion. So we're going to start off with complexion. I haven't even swatched these, but what I've gathered from watching some videos, I think I've, I watched Emily Noel's video. That's the only one I've actually watched. She said that the swatches were a little bit more buildable. So so they don't swatch well, but it's made for the face and that's what you want for powders for the face. I've since swatched the shadows and played with the palette a little bit more. So it's very interesting when you touch the shadows, they aren't super powdery. They almost have a very slight silica kind of slip to it. Now I don't, it doesn't actually feel like a silica powder, but it has that kind of slip in that you don't get loose powder everywhere. It doesn't break down like powder. It, it has a slip the shadows feel almost a little bit drier now they don't feel uncreamy so don't take away that they're dry shadows but they don't feel uncreamy and I actually think they do carry a decent amount of pigment it's nothing crazy like a Natasha Denona or a Pat McGrath but they carry just enough to where you can tell this is going to be such a good palette for beginners and for people who can't handle a lot of pigment and that might be intimidating to them so I did just want to throw that in. So I'm going to start off with my rougher number 19 brush. And so if you have a deeper skin tone, you're going to want to play in the wet paint color. That will give you kind of like a banana powder effect. I'm going to stay right here in the lines, maybe a touch of the lighter shade here. Now I did set my under eyes with a little bit of powder, but I don't even like the powder that I use. 
to be honest. But this just really brightens everything. Emily loved this under the eyes, so that's why I want to try it. I didn't even think to use it under the eyes to be quite honest. Uh, but yeah, it's like nicely brightening. I don't know that I'd necessarily use this to set, but it's really lightweight and it does brighten those under eyes very, very subtly, nothing crazy. Okay, let's deal with contour. Now the pans of these are bigger, but if you go in with a bronzer brush like this, you know, it's still a little bit small, but they're definitely big enough for face brushes. I'm trying to think what I want to use to contour. So you could get in between the gray and brown because contour is technically supposed to be cooler. I'm kind of eyeing the tan shade. Let me get a smaller brush. So this is a refer number five brush, and I just want to see what this color looks like. See, this is quite cool as well, as you can see. It did shade quite nicely. Let me do that over here. I like that. I'm gonna try for a little bit more depth. So I would say if you have a deeper skin tone than myself, you could really play kind of right in between these two. I mean, I'm sure this goes without saying, but be careful with how you mix it because in between that gray and that brown color I kind of got the gray on one side of the brush and it looks gray right there <laughs> So that's the kind of thing that I did worry about with this palette is making sure you get an even blend on that brush Just so that you don't get gray on but I mean as you can see it doesn't look bad I would say I'd probably want a little bit more warmth and if you're looking at it from more of a painter or makeup artist's perspective you can get that brown and then mix in a little bit of this shade for some warmth again I do worry about them having that really good blend like if it was a liquid texture I feel like it would be easier to get an even blend if going from this to this I can see it being tough I'm gonna try it why not? I'll be your test person. Boom. Just like two touches of that. Let's see if we can get like a bronzer look. You know what? I do see that warmth that it added. You see that? Let me do more. I don't, I wouldn't say I love it. <laughs> and by the way, I'm filming at a very weird time today. So the light is shooting weird so you can see this from my window. I would, could avoid it, but whatever. So mixing it in that red wasn't desirable. You see too much of the red showed through. So this is definitely, if you're going to really get into mixing the shades, I do think there's a bit of a learning curve. I think it's easier to mix the same shades in the pan, but then if you dip in other shades, especially when you're applying to a larger area with a larger brush like your face, that's when I can see you running into the blending issues. But it doesn't look bad. Okay, let's do blush now. Very to see, easy to see what you would do with blush. You have a peachier color and a pinker color and then deeper skin tones. Loving Kills right here is gonna be phenomenal on you. I'm gonna mix right here in the middle. I'm using a Flower Beauty brush. Yeah, as you can see, it's a beautiful sheer formula. It'll be interesting to see how this goes on the eyes. I know, this light is probably so annoying. Let's shift. I'm gonna shift. <laughs> there we go. Wow, this is such a pretty blush. Right in between the pinky color and the peachy color. It's really the perfect level of pigmentation for blush. Very easily buildable. I'm gonna just for fun, let's just add a little bit of this. Just for some warmth and a fun pop to the cheek. Ah, it's just so easy to layer. I love it. Really pretty. I like that. I'm gonna go in. I feel like I could use some more of this lighter yellow shade just to brighten up down here. Okay. So I wasn't completely sold on using these shades for contour. Definitely doable, but I think I'd much rather just reach for one of my contour products especially because I like to use a larger brush and these are smaller pans for a large face brush, but I'm sold on using it as blush. How beautiful is that? Okay, let's get on to the eyeballs now. I've already prepped my eyelids with eye primer. I just have some concealer that's sinking into the lines. And I, like I said, I'm very interested to see how this works on the eyes because it works so well on the face and we'll see how it all translates. So I'm gonna start off with right here of the lines shape and I'm gonna highlight, let me get a smaller brush. I'm gonna highlight underneath that brow bone. Normally I do something shimmery, 
Obviously, we don't have that option, but it's doing a beautiful job. Very, very sheer though. You can see it's not like a stark white color. It just is kind of highlighting everything. Now we're gonna go into this shade right here. See, I'm not one that feels very comfortable to really mix these shades. I don't know. Very, very light, but this is for my skin tone, a really fabulous transition and contour shade. Honestly, I think this would be beautiful down the side of the nose. I mean, I did it very, very subtly, but you get the gist. This is literally the perfect transition shade or no makeup makeup kind of shade to add some depth. Let's deepen her up a little bit. We're gonna use right in between these two. So I wanna see how they mix and apply. Definitely much easier, I think, on a small format for the eyes. So natural and so pretty. Wow, I love that. And I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but we're not doing any crazy look today. I really just want to get a feel for this palette. The blendability of these, really beautiful. Okay, we're gonna go into this shade right here. This seems very pigmented. Not super pigmented like a Pat McGrath or a Natasha Denona, but I can see that it's buildable. And if you really wanted more depth, you could go into the deeper blend here. Wow. Honestly, I'm really impressed with the versatility between eyes and face. Now you guys know you can pretty much use any powder however you want traditionally. You can use eyeshadows as face powders. You can use face powders as eyeshadow. But normally you can tell, I feel like, what is actually a face powder because it's very sheer on the eyelid. It might not be as vibrant. And then with an eyeshadow, it's normally lots of opacity on the cheek that you really have to work out to get it to be more natural. So the way that these shadows are able to work so well between the face and the eyes, I am highly impressed with. So definitely a very versatile formula that can be very hard to achieve because it's, you know, as a makeup user, it's easy to use powders everywhere, but as a makeup brand, it's hard to achieve it in such an easy way to where the consumer doesn't have to work for it. Wow, that looks beautiful, the blend of that. I'm gonna get a smaller brush and I'm gonna mix these all along the lower lashes. Should we go smoky? I kind of wanna play with the black. <sighs> mm, I've got to, you guys. Let's just see. This is a really small refer number 14 brush, I love it. So with this black, it's not gonna give you wham bam pigment, but for a black, I really like that because it makes it that much easier to give smokiness to the look. I wanna add some coolness to this, so I'm gonna go into the gray shade. I'm just gonna kind of haze it over the crease because I wanna keep it very cool toned. If you wanted to warm the look up, you can go over with this shade and do what I'm doing and that will warm the look up. All right, now I wanna go in with this cream shade right here on the paint side and I just want to brighten up the lid. Now I notice these lighter shades, they don't have a lot of pigmentation. I'm trying to find the best kind of brush to get opacity from because you can see it's sheerer than I would like, but here's the catch, it's not chalky. A lot of times with lighter shades like this that carry a lot of pigment, you'll notice that the the consistency of it is chalky. These are not chalky. I don't get a lot of fallout. So I think you're forgoing a little bit of that pigmentation to get a non-chalky formula, which typically means that the shadow will actually last longer on the eyelid. At least that's what I find. I find chalky shadows to not have the best lasting power. But you see how that brightened up? You can even really go in here, get more brightness. But it definitely takes some building up with these lighter shades to get actual opacity. I think these are better used as like accents to brighten and kind of clean up a look. I mean, obviously this is a very simple look, but I really, really love it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to do. I'm gonna just see how the black does kind of smudged in the lash line. I'm using a refer number 23 brush. I mean, we know it's not the most pigmented shadow, but it really is not doing bad for a liner like that, you see? I hope Hindash never watches this video because <laughs> my skill level ain't there. Honestly, I probably should have just done that. Like, do you see how cool that is just to add that line? Really extend the eye, but I really wanted to see the pigmentation here. 
just for something smoky. I'm trying to stay away from the inner part of the eye because I really like a cream shade there. I'm gonna go over with black liquid liner. This definitely isn't my favorite shade to use as actual like shadow liner. Where I would recommend to use this black shade is over top of liner. It will make it look blacker, but on its own, it definitely needs a little bit of assistance, which I assumed in the first place. So I'm gonna finish the rest of this look and kind of clean everything up and I'll be back for my final thoughts about this guy. All right guys, turns out I just got stage fright. I went off camera and I just ended up like fixing up the shadow liner to my liking and I think it created such a pretty subtle smoky liner kind of look as you can see. I liked it so much that I didn't want to hide it so I ended up just using some mascara and I really love the look. Obviously it's very simple and you could recreate this look without owning the Hindash palette but I really really like this. Now you guys know I like shiny pretty glittery things so as far as an eyeshadow palette did this completely catch my eye in the beginning. No, I thought the concept, it, it wasn't something that I would feel comfortable with. Like I said, I like being told what to do, I guess. Um, no, but I absolutely love the versatility of these powders. I think it's really special that these work so well on the eyes and they're so buildable, but they're also so blendable at the same time that they work so well on the face. You can use it for under eye powder, for shading, for adding blush, particularly I really loved it for the blush. I will say, and this is just something that I think I need to practice with more, so this is more so user error, but I didn't love it for contouring my face. I would prefer to go into my contouring products that are in my collection because they're also in a bigger pan, and I do feel limited by the pan size. Now, that being said, these are very large pan sizes, and he did that purposefully because this is supposed to be a multi-purpose palette, but your girl likes a fluffy face brush, so for me, it just just didn't work that well, but I love it for cheeks. I really think adding a little bit of powder here really did brighten, and I didn't show you this, but when I was off camera, I took some of the wet side and I put some right here just to, again, brighten up even more, and I really felt like it did a really nice job with that. Blush, love this for blush, and love this for eye colors. So I really like this. I think, you know, $70 is pricey, but Hindash is a person that I really wanted to support and the product itself is beautiful, but I do think there can be a learning curve if you're not so familiar with color theory and how to make colors work on your face, but it's not super complicated either. So just something I personally feel like that I need to play with more to master, but really into the form formula so nice so let me know your thoughts down below like I said this is a true first impression so I definitely have some room to grow with this palette as well but I am very impressed so I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in the next one bye guys have a good one